Hey everyone, I'm home and we are going to go through everything that we picked up in Japan. Now, as you guys can see from a little bit of B-roll, I have shown you what's under my desk and what's currently sitting over on the other side of the room, which is two big boxes. Uh, we've got quite a lot to get through, so stay tuned. Now let's kick things off with what was under my desk. Uh, the reason why they're under my desk is because I need to test these things. And uh, most of the items actually come from junk sections and not just like one store, but obviously the, uh, mainly across all the stores that we went to. So I'm gonna do my best to remember each store, um, if it was a hard off or a book off, and the prices that we paid for them. First, this gun con. Now this was in the junk section um, of a hard off, the one with the really big, uh, amount of tubs. Uh, so this was uh, 110. I grabbed this from one of the first hard offs that we went to and it's a Super Famicom uh, Super Game Boy. It's actually in pretty good condition. Um, it's 864 but I have a few of these and they've not worked in the past so I'll put that there in the testing pile. As you may recall from Hard Off videos, I ended up picking up this gun con uh, for a dollar ten. Um, it's all complete and in really good condition. Now, I think that one of the reasons why that you can find gun cons so easily in a Hard Off in good condition and boxed is because that they have to set up everything to play a game. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> They have to be set up to a CRT and also have a PS1 and a game to be tested. Now, I will test these when um, I'm home. I did end up picking a few of them up. I can't turn anything away that is a dollar, as you guys know. Um, it is complete in box and really nice condition. So I ended up picking up the unboxed one for $1.10, this boxed one for $1.10, and then this one for $3.24. And then this one, I did not have this variant. I'm really, really happy that we ended up picking this one up. So this is the Time Crisis one. It comes complete with the game, and this was 3.30. So, yeah, can't go wrong. I think this is gonna work too. It's also worth mentioning that this not only come with a copy of the game, it also has a strategy guide in there too. Now, one of the controllers I'm finding harder and harder to find when I go to Japan is the Fluoro PS2 design. I absolutely love this color. I do have one that I grabbed a couple of years ago in the junk section, and now I have a second one. I ended up paying 3.30 yen for this, but it's also worth mentioning when we were traveling that week and shopping at Hard Offs, they had 20% off their full price ticketed items that were listed for 2,000 yen or under. Now, the best part is the junk section actually had 30% off. So uh, roughly with the conversion on all of this stuff that I'm going to show you that come from a junk section that was purchased in that first week had 30% off. So um, with the conversion of uh, Japanese yen to Australian dollars, I pretty much paid around $3.30 Australian, $3.50 um, for this controller. So. I feel like I got some bargains actually. But yeah, I'm really happy to have this and it's gonna be cleaned and tested. I ended up picking up two DS lights unboxed. This one was 330 yen, a white one. And I also grabbed a black one. This one was 550 yen. The Talkman, uh, this was in one of the first uh, hard offs we went to. And I picked this up for $1.10. You may remember that I was digging around through the SNES carts looking for good games and I found one, two, three. I found Donkey Kong one, two, and three for a dollar ten a piece. Now I'm gonna clean these up and test them and gift them to a friend. I also take the time to go through the Game Boy cartridges and I ended up finding Super Mario Land and two copies of Dr. Mario, all for a dollar ten each. Then at another hard off, I ended up picking up Tetris for 275 and Dr. Mario for 275. But you'll see this one has 550 on it. I didn't realize at the time that I owned Dr. Mario, it wasn't in my list. So um, I ended up switching the one that I picked up for 275 uh, in the games room over because it was much better condition. This one has a little rip in the back, but I'm gonna gift these two to friends as well. I also couldn't believe that this game was still in a hard off 
for 324. This is Philosoma on the PS1 and it's one really popular shmup. Now, if you ever see a shmup at that price in any hard off or game store, I definitely recommend that you pick it up. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this copy. I'm going to definitely go and check my version of it and see if this one's much better disc quality. Uh, but yeah, you can't go wrong. 324. This game is an absolute killer game. Also on camera and found in the junk section was this sweet Nintendo Switch pouch. I really like it. I don't necessarily use the Switch as a handheld, but um, yeah, I definitely will use it more so. I didn't have a pouch for it at all, so that was a good find for a dollar. I'm probably going to cover this book off a couple of times, but I've um, put some of the stuff underneath my desk because I do want to check it first to make sure it works when we go to put it in the room. And um, this book off is located in central Kyoto and had some amazing deals. No lie. Um, I didn't have my GoPro out the first time filming there, but the second time was my last video that I uploaded for you guys. And um, yeah, I just want to quickly run you through uh, the first lot of stuff that I ended up picking up. So this was on camera. This is a DS light in the crimson red black combo. It's red on top, black underneath, and it's probably one of my favorite variants of the DS light. So do stay tuned. I'm going to be talking more about the DS light in an up and coming video. Now this was 1800 yen minus 10%. I think with taxes included, I paid about 1750 yen. Um, so let's say about $22, $21 or something Australian for a boxed one. I haven't even opened it yet. Um, it does have some yellowing to the box, but I'm pretty happy to have that in my collection. Not on film, um, but they had a little section um, where I ended up finding this DS light a few days earlier that we ended up checking out. And I got really, really lucky. They had this PS3 Bluetooth headset or earphone thingy um, for 4.63 yen. They also had, it has been used, but they had a um, genuine PS2 controller for 464 yen boxed. They had a original analog um, PS1 controller, but they've actually put PS2 on this for some reason. But anyway, um, that was 264 yen. And then they also had this um, PS2 controller and it was 290 yen, both in good condition. But definitely the steal of um, that book off ended up being something that was tucked away and hidden. And it was this gorgeous Pokemon keyboard. Um, I Honestly, I couldn't believe the price. I had to do a double check and I did ask them to check the price when I took it up to the counter. It's 264 yen. No lie. Like these on eBay seem to be selling over $100 um, for brand new ones. This one looks like in fantastic condition. I ended up finding them in other stores during the course of the trip for about $40 and I was very tempted to pick one up. Um, I love the box art variant of this. I'm not sure if I'll use it, but I definitely am a huge Pokemon fan and um, I love Pikachu. There's a big Pikachu on it. Um, so yeah, for 264 yen, this was an absolute steal. So it just shows that even in a book off, in the middle of a city, you can find a bargain. Now, as I get to those boxes, I just wanted to show you um, this super cool, I'm not sure if it's late 90s or um, early 2000s, it is a handy cam bag for my cameras. And it is a Sony one, it's um, really, really cool inside. I know it's probably not overly exciting to show you guys, but I did want to cover it because I needed a camera bag and it's bright and colorful and I do love it so much. It's really, really good. So shout out to Retro Gamer Guy for finding this for me for a thousand yen. Thank you. Now, the first of the big boxes. This is pretty crazy. I didn't realize how much stuff is actually in here. So um, let's get to it. There is some Pepsi Man figurines. Um, these are from those little gotcha balls. Um, I ended up paying 100 yen per bag at that book off that I ended up picking that Pokemon keyboard up from. There is a couple of junk bin finds in here. Here is a DSi case, but I'm actually going to use this for my DS light. So it just needs a bit of a clean up. So I'm going to put that aside. Now this item was in the junk bin and it was on film. I did 
sort of discard it um, and then Retro Gamer Guy came past and picked it up and was like I can de-yellow it so that's one of his jobs over Christmas is to fix this um, PC Engine controller port up so we'll be able to add extra controllers when gaming. I ended up picking up this Drift game for the Super Famicom for 324 yen. I picked up Sin and Punishment, which is a run and gun style shooter game. Uh, it's also a Japanese exclusive for the Nintendo 64. It looks amazing. Uh, I really can't wait to play this game and it plays in English. So if you're looking to um, add a Jap at start adding Japanese games to your collection, I definitely think this is one you should grab. It's starting to get really pricey on eBay. I paid 4,800 yen for this, which might seem a little bit expensive, but the cheapest I seen, um, ended up coming across this on the trip was 4,300 yen. Another cool but gimmicky sort of item uh, was the PlayStation Lunchbox. Uh, Retro Gamer Guy ended up picking this up at Super Potato for 1600 yen and we couldn't find any more of these on the trip. This was the last one on the shelf. Now for some PS2. Shadow of the Colossus and this was 330 yen. The game with the longest title in history I think. Bobby de Bobo Bobo. Bo Bo. <laughs> this game was 540 yen and picked up at a hard off. And this game is a little weird, but you end up uh, fighting people with your nostril hairs. Another great find of the trip was at the book off in Kyoto. We ended up finding this game, um, which is uh, sort of like a destroyer game. You end up having, having to fight this girl in uh, that's um, being created large or she's she's gotten bigger of, of sorts and she's destroying everything. So you also have to take photos of her and try and bring her down sort of thing too so we got this for 100 yen and i'm really looking forward to playing this this weekend i picked up this game in trader 4 in akiba and um i think this looks pretty cool it's called extermination i hope it does play um in a way that i can enjoy it but i'm definitely going to give it a good go i think this came at a recommendation from ken's games so um i think this is one of his like hidden gem games so uh thank you for mentioning this ken this box seems never ending. Uh, I'm gonna go through PS3, but don't worry, there is so much retro in this box. We picked up Resistance, Fall of Man. This was 232 yen. We picked up Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. These were varying prices, but the general price was around 330 yen for those. Another game that we did not see a lot when we were around and about, to be honest, we only found this one copy and it was 500 yen. The game is called Tokyo Jungle and um, in this game, it, I would say it's like a simulation, but also you're playing as animals when the world has been destroyed, all the animals have um, overrun it. So uh, yeah, another game that I'm hoping that I'll be able to play through, but one that I've wanted for such a long time. So definitely check out Tokyo Jungle. Soul Calibur 2 on the GameCube. This was 463 yen. This amazing clean copy of Golf was 464 yen. Bomber Boy. This was at Trader 4 and it was 580 yen. When we were in Kyoto and we went to Okajamaken, I think that's what it's called, and um, I ended up picking up, um, I think this is called Jungle Swing. It looks pretty cool. It's a Donkey Kong game that I did not have in the collection. I think I ended up paying around 580 yen for this, but the PAL version um, slash Australian version um, is quite expensive on eBay. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this a go and I love Donkey Kong, so, and I need it for the collection. Also another game that I needed for the collection um, are the Tingle games. Now I believe there are two in the series. I'm not gonna be paying the $100 plus, I think, price tag that I've seen them go for on eBay. I ended up picking this up for 324 yen. It's like a puzzle type game. Um, Tingle is a character that is from the Legend of Zelda series. I also picked up this very clean copy of F1 Race for 275 yen. 
Again, this is a variant that I did not have. I do have the big box PAL version or Australian version that came out. When I was in the hard off junk section, I ended up finding this manual and some cards uh, and stuff like that for the N64. Now, some of my N64s do not have manuals. Now, I do know that the serial number at the bottom is not going to match the ones that I have boxed, but I always like to have everything, you know, somewhat complete. So they ended up selling me this for a dollar. Other Super Famicom games I picked up is Kid Clown in Crazy Chase. Um, I ended up paying um, 1180 yen at Trader 4 for this game, but if I had have held out, I could have picked it up for around um, 800 yen at another store. Now I need my phone to pronounce a couple of these games, and I do apologize in advance if I do say them incorrectly, but this particular game is a platformer, and it is uh, where you play as a little monkey, and it's um, Hen Shen Zeru Jirukan no Day Buken. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you're a cheeky little monkey and it looks really, really cool. I ended up picking that up for 330 yen. The next game that I picked up wasn't on my list when I was traveling over there, but once I checked out what this game was all about, I had to have it. So it looks like it's got elements of um, being a shmup and also a platform game. So uh, it's called Gogo Ackman 2 and I ended up picking this up for 550 yen. The next cartridge I picked up for the Super Famicom was 550 yen, and this is another super cute platform game. You've got like a really long tongue. It gives me um, vibes of the coloring, um, sort of like Kirby uh, meets um, a Wonder Boy style game. It looks really, really cool. And it's called Magical Teruto Kun Magic Adventure. Another game that was on the list and that I would love to have picked up, which I ended up picking up, was for 1100 yen and it is Hammering Harry. And a big shout out to the Den Den boys for um, putting this on their Instagram page. This looks so good. Another platformer. Definitely check this game out. Nearing the end of the trip, I picked up another cart, which was 400 yen in Kyoto, and it is Darius Twin. At another hard off, I picked up for 330 yen Super Adventure Island. I do not own the PAL version, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this game finally. At one of the last book offs that we ended up checking out, I found Samurai Spirits for 891 yen. Um, it's also referred to as Samurai Showdown. So this was a competitive fighting game developed and published by SNK for their Neo Geo Arcade, and then a home and then a home platform. Uh, port was released in 1993 and this looks like a really cool fighting game. Back in Shinjuku, I traveled back to not only film in this store, but I uh, wanted to pick up this Gradius 3 copy. Um, this is uh, really, really clean. I ended up seeing this for uh, closer to 4,000 yen um, everywhere else I traveled to. I picked this up for 1,500 yen. Another cute and bright sort of like Alex the Kid style um, platformer game is called Super Wa um, Super Wagen Yen Wag Yen Super Wag Yen Land 2. Um, I ended up picking this up for 1100 yen and um, it's fantastic condition. It is super super clean. So I'm really glad I ended up picking this up. And it looks like the last Super Famicom game I picked up, unless there's some over there in that other box we're yet to go through, was Dino Wars. And um, this is a pretty cute game. It looks like you riding the dinosaur and yeah, going through each level. Sort of reminds me a little bit um, level-wise as Chuck Rock, if you've ever played that game. Uh, so yeah, another one. And this is um, IREM Corp. And uh, I also came on recommendation um, of the Den Den Boys. A really cheap N64 title that I ended up picking up was 330 yen at a hard off. Um, it's a little bit faded, but it's MRC, so it's a car racing game and box. So for 330 yen, I, I just can't say no. Now I'm going to take you through the PC Engine games. Firstly, is Yokai Dochukuki. Um, apologize for the bad pronunciation. This reminds me of Alex the Kid and we definitely were playing this um, when we were last night um, in Kyoto actually. I picked this up at one of the stores I believe for um, less than 1300 yen um, which was a little bit more than I wish I had to pay for it. Um, a friend of mine picked this up for 275 yen um, but I wasn't as lucky. Uh, but I didn't want to leave it. I feel like this game might go up in price because it is, um, yeah, really, really fun and quite playable. 
Next is Fantasy Zone. This was 1800 yen and I feel like this game is going to continue to go up in price so I wanted to get it now, um, not at a later stage because I've done that over the years. I've been watching games just go up and up and up and um, yeah, I feel like the Fantasy Zone is one of those games that in the future will go up so I grabbed this one. In Akiba, I ended up picking up Dragon Spirit. Now, my first introduction to this game was a few days earlier when we ended up going to one of the amusement centers. And uh, when I played Dragon Spirit, I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, I think this is a really, really cool uh, top-down shooter. So um, you're playing as a dragon and uh, you've got to go and rescue the princess. Um, it, yeah, it's that's sort of the premise of the game, I believe. So um, I paid 1600 yen for this, but you can pick it up cheaper. I did see it cheaper throughout the rest of the trip. Kind of regret paying 1600 yen for it when I could have saved probably three or four bucks, but I picked it up. Then I also picked up Dragon Saber. Now Dragon Saber is the sequel to Dragon Spirit. I ended up picking this up, I believe for um, 3,800 yen. I left this in the store, but then the last night we were there, I ended up running back there. It was 10 o'clock before they closed in Kyoto. So um, I ran back and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick up that game. Again, this is another one. Um, both of these I feel are maybe underrated titles for the PC Engine. Um, so definitely check them out. And if you can grab cheap copies, grab them. You are gonna love those games. Salamander uh, on the PC Engine. Funnily enough, we didn't own this version um, and it goes for quite a bit. So we ended up picking this up at the beginning of the trip. It might have been the first hard off hunt that we went on and it was um, 2750 yen. I actually picked up three Sega Saturn games. I can't seem to locate where um, the Christmas um, Nights into Dreams has gone to, so I apologize, but that was 330 yen and on film. Uh, then I, Retro Gamer Guy ended up picking up um, this Clockwork Night game. It looks like a platformer. I haven't checked this game out yet. Uh, he paid 330 yen for this. And then one of the best deals I ended up picking up on the entire trip was Panzer Dragoon. This game I ended up grabbing for 100 yen. It was purely by chance. Um, I was, we were walking back from a hard off. We seen a book off, I walked in, I ended up going through just even a couple of the games. I pulled this out um, and yeah, obviously it says Panzer Dragoon. It was on this end um, that when I pulled it out, so it did sort of spark my attention. Um, and as soon as I seen this was 100 yen, I walked away with it straight away. At another store, Retro Gamer Guy ended up finding Black Hole Assault. Um, this looks like a mech style game. I haven't heard of this before prior. I think I only paid a few dollars for it. It is a Mega CD title. Uh, so yeah, he's going to have fun playing that. He loves his Mega CD. Now here's for sort of a naughty game. Uh, we do like to try and grab them when we can. This is an R-rated um, PC FX game and it's called Can Can Bunny Extra DX. And I believe the whole thing is that you're taking photos of anime style girls uh, during the course of the game. Now I'm not sure if I will get in trouble for streaming a game like this, um, but I definitely am interested uh, in trying to play a little bit of it, seeing how uh, ludish it is and then uh, maybe doing a little video on it. Um, so yeah, I'll let you guys know um, what this turns out like. So if you've played Can Can Bunny Extra DX, definitely hit the comment section below. So we ended up picking up only two PS Vita titles and one of which was Persona 4 Dancing All Night. This was the crazy value pack. Um, I ended up grabbing this for 1100 yen when we were in Den Den Town, which was really, um, I think, good value. Uh, really nice condition, not scratched at all. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy to have picked up this Atlas game. Also, um, what I ended up picking up uh, which was on film. This was in Shinjuku and the cheapest that we ended up finding this game overall the entire trip. It's 5200 yen and it is the Catherine on the PS Vita and uh, a Catherine full body. Now this game wasn't released anywhere else except for Japan in this box set on the PS Vita. So um, this is one I really, really wanted to pick up. Uh, it was on my list and uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be covering 
2019's remakes or remasters um, and doing a top 10 video for you guys at the end of the year so do stay tuned for that one too. We did check out Mandarake in Osaka. There's not much that I would report back. It's probably better for toy collectors, but I did end up going through the guides and I found the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for 300 yen. And the reason why it spoke to me so much is it's just so gorgeous. It's got this beautiful embossed raised um, to the cardboard. Uh, it's really hard to explain, but it looks gorgeous. It was definitely something worth adding uh, to my Legend of Zelda collection. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Now it's time for some PS1. I found Runabout Climax, a car racing game for $1.10. Brave Fencer for $1.10. This Namco shooter, which I can't remember the name of and I do apologize, for a dollar. Bomberman Fantasy Race for 380 yen. Police Knots for 1100 yen. Um Jam Alami, which is the sequel to Papa the Rapper, uh, for a dollar. This game looks amazing and it was 324 yen. Uh, it's Tom a runner. Uh, I'll put a little video of it in now. Gun Bullet, I did not have this variant, this was a dollar. Parasite Eve for a dollar and Parasite Eve 2 for 3.30 yen. Biohazard and Biohazard 2 for a dollar ten each. Dino Crisis 2 for a dollar ten. Street Games 97 for 324 yen. This had the Australian release as Extreme Games. Starblade for 3.24 yen, which is a space shooting game. Hermie Hop Ahead, 864 yen. We picked this up as one of the first games on the trip and it is a platformer and looks really, really cute. Magical Hoppers for 324 yen. Now this is also known as Pandemonium, released in 1996 on the PS1. Star Wars Rebel Assault 2. Uh, definitely love my Star Wars games. I wasn't leaving this for 324 yen. Now this is Twin B, the deluxe pack on the PS1. Uh, this has quite a few different variants. I believe it's also released on the Sega Saturn. Great Konami shmup. Now, at one of the first hard offs, I ended up coming across this shmup and it looks really, really cool. Um, it's part of the Time series and I believe it's Bukan de Desu Yo um, Time series and I really wasn't going to let it go for um, 1,080 yen. Now, remember, I ended up getting 20% off that price, so roughly with the conversion, it probably cost me around $11 Australian, and it is in absolute fantastic condition. Now, during the course of the trip, I was looking for the other ones in the series, and then I ended up coming across the second one. Um, I hope this is the second one, this one's the first one, but um, this one was 2,800 yen, and both of these games look fantastic, so I know exactly what games I'm gonna be testing out this weekend. Now, that's the end of the first box. We're gonna get onto the second one shortly. But if you're new here, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Over the years of traveling to Japan, Retro Gamer Guy has been collecting the Namco Museum discs. Now, he's been collecting them separately and it took him a few years to end up picking up all of them. But this year, he ended up coming across the limited edition set of all of them together and it is just simply stunning. Now it does have a little bit of fading on the front of it but to have picked this up in complete condition with the outer cardboard slip and all of the discs in mint condition like new not used. Um, he ended up picking this up for around 3,300 yen. And I think that was a fantastic deal that he ended up picking this up for. Um, this has a number of titles in there. So it's quite a number of discs. And it's got classic games like Galaga and uh, Pac-Man and a heap of other ones um, that, uh, yeah, are just absolute classics. So uh, definitely check out these Namco Museum discs. Now it's no secret that Retro Gamer Guy's favorite game is Metal Gear Solid. And on this trip, he ended up picking up a ton of Metal Gear Solid variants. Now I don't know all of them, um, but I'm just gonna run you through some of the stuff that he ended up picking up. From Trader and 600 yen, Metal Gear Solid Integral. 
from a book off for 908 yen, Metal Gear Solid, the original game. Now, I believe that these were a couple of dollars each and uh, one of which I do remember picking up in the junk section. Uh, but Metal Gear Solid, this one is Peace Walker on the PSP and also Portable Ops. Now, I think this was about 330 yen, but this was definitely a dollar ten. Then at a hard off, he ended up picking up for 550 yen, Guns of the Patriots, which is Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, and he comes in this really, really nice slot case but it also contains a bonus disc and a gorgeous steelbook. Then on the PS4 he picked up Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. Uh, this is a nice slipcase and limited edition set released in Japan. It looks like it comes with a collector's disc and also a book. Now he hasn't opened this yet I'm gonna leave it for him to do. Then he picked up three of the PS3 variants. So there is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Special Edition for 330 yen. Then for 550 yen at another hard off, he picked up the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Really, really nice condition again on this one. Then lastly, he's picked up Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker HD edition on the PS3. I believe that this uh, physical edition was only released in Japan. Now I have some variants on the PS2 for you guys to have a look at. So Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance, this was 950 yen. Then Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty for 330 yen. Metal Gear Solid 3 Substance in this really cool slip case and it also comes with a substance book. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Uh, this one and the other one that I just shown you, I'm not sure how much they were, but they wouldn't have been more than 330 yen. And again, this one comes with a cool book as well and slip case. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Now this one um, is a different variant again, and uh, it was 232 yen from a book off. Now I believe this to be one of the items that I think he actually likes the most. Um, it is just a slip cover that was released um, in Japan and it was a promotional item only. So this um, is really quite hard to come by. I believe the slip itself recently sold on eBay for around $100 US. Um, it is the Metal Gear Solid 2 um, Sons of Liberty. It's I think it's believed it's called the Gact cover. Um, and this is a uh, Japanese pop star that uh, happened to do a song for the commercial um, for this particular game. Now, Retro Gamer Guy stumbled across this in a hard off for 550 yen, uh, minus 20%, so it ended up being about $5.50 to $6 Australian. Uh, and yeah, he's really, really happy with this find. Um, yeah, it was really good for him to find this one. The last two items he ended up picking up for Metal Gear Solid ended up being soundtracks. Now, he picked up Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty for 2600, brand new and still factory sealed from Friends in Akiba. And then he also picked up from a book off, I believe this ended up being um, maybe 2,600 yen or something like that, which may seem a little bit expensive, but soundtracks do hold their value for some reason. And they end up being like even more expensive on eBay. So we do look through them when we're um, game hunting. Um, it's not something I've really ever shown on film, but um, I will next trip, I promise you and um, everyone can make a list of their favorite soundtracks and we'll try and track them down really cheap. But he ended up picking up Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain soundtrack. Um, and this one actually is a limited edition version. It contains The Lost Tapes, which is a cassette and still sealed. So I don't believe this came in a slip cover. Um, it probably just had a plastic wrap around it, but it is in really good condition. And um, yeah, he's really happy to have added this to the collection finally too. Now we're at the big items. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Okay. So from when we're in Akibara, we ended up going to Beep and Beep always comes through with the goods. Uh, I have found something there every single year. I know it's in the middle of central Tokyo, but I've found so many good things there over the years. Just, I swear, hands down. Um, so Retro Gamer Guy ended up finding this. Um, particular Space Harrier Sega Saturn pack. Uh, it's in fantastic condition. It's actually really, really big though. Um, so this one we ended up having to post back to ourselves. So don't forget, I am going to be doing a video on how to post items back for, uh, from Japan to your country. So um, do be sure to check out that video once it's live. 
But yeah, he ended up picking this up for um, 8,800 yen. Now these are two really cool pieces that Retro Gamer Guy found in two different stores and they were around 3,300 or 3,400 yen each. And it was Gun Survivor 4 and Gun Survivor 2. And these are from the Resident Evil series. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing these. As you guys know, I am a huge shooter fan. I am a huge Gun Con fan. Um, I absolutely love Capcom games and these are gonna be absolute crackers. Now, I do collect the mini consoles and uh, some people like the minis, some people don't like them. I like them because I feel like it's a great introduction for people to collect if they want to relive memories with family and also um, have, they don't have a lot of room, they can pack a punch with quite a few games. Now, I have most of the minis in my collection Next on the list is the Neo Geo and uh, the Gold Famicom. I will get both of those next time I travel to Japan. But this time, due to limited space, uh, Retro Gamer Guy picked up the PlayStation Classic, the Japanese variant, and it's pretty neat. One of the last pickups that Retro Gamer Guy actually scored was the Lethal Enforcers packed with the Justifier for the Mega CD. Now, um, he ended up picking this up for 2200 yen in Kyoto at one of the last stores that we were filming in. So this was captured on film. And uh, yeah, it's really good condition. It's still sealed up at the moment. We're gonna open this up and play it on the weekend. Now, our first day of shopping on the trip, we ended up picking up something really cool in Akihabara. And it pays to dig around and see if you can find something. A few people have actually messaged me about this saying this was a pretty good deal. We paid 1100 yen for Typing of the Dead on the PS2. It's actually really weighty as well. We ended up posting this one back to ourselves. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool looking game and apparently we can play it. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a little review on this one and all the other zombie games that I picked up on this trip in the new year. The last item that we picked up when we were in Japan was the PC Engine Core Graphics. Um, I still can't believe that this was behind the counter at a book off and um, it hadn't been cleaned or tested. So this is a bit of a big risk for us, um, but it ended up working. We tested it the night before we left um, in our hotel room and it worked perfectly. The controller does need to be opened up and cleaned a little bit, but that is um, pretty easy to do. So we ended up um, talking to them uh, about what was behind the counter. They had an N64, then they had this there too. Um, after talking to them about how much they wanted for it, they said 5,000 yen even. Um, so that converts um, to not that much Australian and uh, we definitely wanted to pick up another one. Uh, we only ever had the one controller, so now we can play games together. And uh, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to um, cleaning this one up and um, having, enough, having it in the collection. Um, and especially that it worked perfectly the night before we left. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone for watching this video. I do appreciate it. And thank you to all of my um, old and new subscribers here on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and also to hit subscribe and the notification bell. I have a ton more videos coming for you uh, on Japan, uh, things that I have filmed that I haven't had time to edit yet, but they are going to be up very, very soon. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.